Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. In today's video, we're going to talk about exercising at higher altitudes. Uh, this is on page 275. It's in chapter eight, and it's part of a, a subsection of the chapter. And that is on page 266, environmental considerations when exercising. So there are a couple of things from an environmental perspective that you have to keep in mind. The, this, this particular subject I was asked a question by a student, what's the difference uh, when you're training, you know, in a city that's 5,000 feet above sea level, 6,000 feet, i.e. like Denver, Colorado. And, the, you know, the question was related to like athletes, how do they deal with or contend with training at altitude? And so it was more like a question of physiology. I love that stuff. It's very, very interesting because Ultimately, the connection between altitude and physiology is really pretty straightforward because it's related to the total amount of available oxygen in the air when you're when you're living at higher or lower altitudes. Now, I live in Florida. I'm at sea level for the most part. Um, you know, what five feet, ten feet? It's irrelevant uh, for the first hundred couple of hundred feet, it's totally irrelevant where you're at when you're at, quote, sea level. Okay, so for me, I've got no problems with getting enough oxygen into my body when I exercise. Now, I will tell you this, I used to, when I was in the military, I was stationed in Colorado Springs, which is actually 5,000 plus feet above sea level, significantly different um, way of dealing with exercising from that perspective. So I needed, I remember when I first went up there, I needed a couple of weeks to get acclimated to the lower concentration of oxygen. And that's the, and that is the direct connection. The higher the altitude, uh, the less available oxygen. Uh, you And you probably know this, and Ace tells you this on, on this little subsection, the the total or the relative oxygen concentration in the air we breathe, no matter where you're at, this is relative, okay? The relative concentration is always approximately 20% oxygen. I think it's like 78% nitrogen, 20, 21% oxygen in the air. Now that doesn't change no matter what the barometric pressure is. It's the absolute, the total amount of oxygen molecules that does change. In, in other words, the concentration, the lower the pressure, the lower the what we call the barometric pressure, um, the less oxygen is going to be in the same amount of air, the total or the absolute amount. Remember, the relative amount is always 20%, 21%, something like that. But the total amount of oxygen in a specific quantity of air changes with decreasing or increasing pressure. Remember, total barometric pressure decreases as you go higher and higher in altitude. So the total amount of oxygen available when I breathe in right now here in Florida is significantly greater than when I was living in Colorado Springs, Colorado, right? Where, the, where I'm at 5,000, 5,500 uh, feet above sea level. So there was less oxygen. What is the physiological difference? Well, it's in the total concentration of red blood cells in your body. There it is. There's the connection. Uh, what basically happens is, is as you go higher and higher in altitude, barometric pressure decreases, less available oxygen in the air you're breathing, which means your body has to compensate in some way, shape, or form. And so what Ace will tell you, of course, is that um, there's problems, right? when you get higher and higher in altitude to the point where when you look at uh, figure nine, or excuse me, 814, you look at this figure, there are terms that describe higher and higher levels of altitude, what that altitude level is in both feet and meters, and of course, barometric pressure. But that's the connection is that your body needs more oxygen carrying red blood cells. And that's what happens. The longer you live or stay at altitude, the higher the concentration of red blood cells. Hence the reason, folks, uh, hence the reason why the Olympic Training Center, at least one of the two main ones in this country, is located in Colorado Springs, Colorado, because you're at altitude. If I train and live in Colorado Springs, then over the course of months and, of course, years, the greater the oxygen-carrying capacity of my blood becomes because I get more red blood cells. Hope that makes sense. 
uh, increased altitude, decreased barometric pressure. Um, somehow or another, I got to get more oxygen into my, into my, or to my working muscles. The way that happens is that my body increases the total concentration of red blood cells in my blood. So now I got more red blood cells, which is where the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood occurs. And that's the, uh, and that's the deal with that. So what ACE is giving you in figure 814 is some terminology. Now, if it's me, and I want to memorize this. I'm going to use the read, write, recite method. And I'm simply going to rewrite figure 814. Here's a tip. Don't worry about the barometric pressure. They're, if they ask you a question on barometric pressure, that's just silly. Um, what they would ask you if they're going to ask you a question on this particular section is uh, what altitude in either meters or feet do we see the death zone occurring? Where does the death zone occur when it comes to when it comes to altitude? And that's at about eight thousand meters, twenty six thousand feet. That's Pike. That not Pike's Peak. Pike's Peak is at fourteen thousand feet. Twenty six thousand feet is what Mount Everest level stuff. So low altitude, moderate, high. Uh, and then very high, and then extreme, and then the death zone. I would just write those down. And your numbers are pretty, pretty straightforward. They don't have to be exact, but the but they're giving you just um, real simple numbers to, to know. Roughly 5,000 feet is sort of that uh, changeover between low and moderate. So moderate altitude is occurring at approximately 5,000. It goes from about 5,000 to about 8,000 feet above sea level. And uh, actually they tell you that at moderate five to 8,000 to high altitudes, eight to 14, that gives you a rough idea of the numbers that you would, you'd want to know all the way up to what's known as the death zone, 26,000 feet. The other thing is this uh, second paragraph is uh, the signs and symptoms. If you're going to know anything about this particular uh, sub section, just know what altitude sickness is. It's pretty straightforward. Headaches, I think, is the main, is the main. I know that's what happened to me. Headache, had incessant headaches until my body acclimated and I started to obviously get the uh get the physiological adaptation of greater, greater concentration of red blood cells. But I had headaches all day when I first moved up to altitude. Uh nausea, another classic example. And in general, it's just your overall lethargy, being tired and your overall physical output, which is which is diminished. Um, of course, the other thing is lightheadedness and and anything related to what we what we now understand altitude sickness is, which is just a decreased concentration of oxygen in your in your body, your blood sick uh, blood system. Of course, shortness of breath. Uh, it can be avoided, obviously, by uh, by just proper uh, acclimation to the, to the, uh, altitude place that you're in normally within a couple of days, you start to feel again, depends on where you're at. If you take a drive up to Pike's peak at 14,000 feet, it's going to take you more than a couple of days to feel, you know, kind of normal. Um, it's going to be weeks, right? Keep in mind that at a certain, at high altitude, for instance, moderate to higher altitude, you're never going to be able to function at the same level as at sea level, just as a, for instance, again, that's an important, important part of what they um, are explaining to you. So again, page 275, this figure 814 is really the only thing that you'd have to sort of memorize and understand. And if you're going to do it, know the, uh, know the issues related to altitude sickness. Um, and of course the names or the levels right, of altitude, low, moderate, high, very high, and then extreme, and then the death zone, and of course, the uh, the numbers that go are associated with that. And again, keep in mind, we are here to help you to pass your ACE exam. That's the goal. And uh, we definitely want you to uh, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button. And, and the other thing to keep in mind is let us know that you, you know, you went through the video, you understand this section by typing in the comment section, understand. If you do that, that helps us to, um, to know what it is, what topics are helpful to you as students as you're going through the ACE, um, the ACE materials. We're here to help you out. 
leave a comment, let us know, go to the Facebook group. If you haven't gone there, by the way, get in there and engage and interact with other students. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye.